to go ahead. Everybody that had to make the play on this last possession did just that, starting with being able to handle Micah Parsons, but Goff had to get the ball out as well. Dan Skipper, an extra offensive lineman, comes in. Play action. End zone. There it is! Unbelievable! The two-point try is good. Welcome to Club 93. Guys, this is going to be my final video on this situation. The situation between the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys that came down to this two-point conversion. Uh, I want to start it off by reading you guys a quote. And the title of this quote is Life Goes On. So here's the quote. On this road called life, you have to take the good with the bad. Smile with the sad. Love what you got. And remember what you had. Always forgive, but never forget. Learn from your mistakes, but never forget. People change. Things go wrong, but just remember, the ride goes on. And I thought it was fitting for me to start with that quote tonight because when you truly think about it, both of these teams are in the playoffs. And they got to move forward. And life goes on for both of them. And, you know, we can sit here and dwell on this play over and over again and try to figure out what happened. But at the same time, I feel like it don't change what's in front of these teams. Like I said, both of these teams are in the playoffs. Detroit won their division and Dallas fighting for seeding. So they both go going to be in the playoffs. So to sit here and keep kicking a dead horse, it's kind of ridiculous when you, th when you think about it. I've read a lot of you guys' comments on my last two videos. I want you guys to understand that I'm not a Cowboy fan, nor am I a Detroit Lions fan. I'm a former player who played 15 years. And I'm also a former Super Bowl winning coach. So I'm just giving you what I think happened on this play and how this ref messed this up. Talking about this guy right here. How he got this all messed up. That's all I'm doing. So for you guys to take your anger out on me in the comments, <laughs> I love it. I love it because you guys don't understand. I'm the middle man in this. I'm the middle man in this. And I'm trying to explain to you guys what happened and how he got this wrong. You know, everybody make mistakes. The refs, they make mistakes too. And so I want to address some things that's like been said down in the comments. Everybody want to go back to that play where Dallas got called for a kicking, a tripping call. It was absolutely a bad call. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys that play right now. It was absolutely the worst call in the history of sports. There was no tripping by the tight end. They called it on number 89. And as you can see, he, he didn't trip anybody. Actually, it was Hutchison that kicked his leg out and not the tight end. Yes, that's a bad call. That is a bad call because instead of Dallas having the ball on like the 22-yard line or 24-yard line, that call pushed them back all the way to the 44-yard line. And Dallas had to settle for a field goal in that situation. But let me just say this. You know, some of you guys said that the game would be over if that penalty don't happen. You don't know that. You don't know that. Anything could have happened there. They could have fumbled the next play. We don't know that. They still end up kicking the field goal. And Detroit take the ball down and score. So there's that possibility, okay? The other thing that, you know, people keep bringing up is the formation, which I'm going to go over that in a second. And I'm doing it from a different angle right here. He just got it wrong. Okay? He just got it wrong. Most times when a guy reports, it's from the sideline. Almost every time a guy reports, it comes from the sideline. 99% of the time, the report is going to come from the sideline, the guy that's reporting. Rarely do they get the reporter coming out the huddle. So basically, this referee, when Decker came up to him from the huddle, 
and also 58, this guy right here. Because he's going to end up being the tight end on the end of the line scrimmage right here. But he was just disguised the thing. He just walked over there with Decker, and Decker reported. That's pretty much what he did. You know, he had no inclination of going out and catching no ball. He was going to get right here on the end of the line scrimmage. When they shift, you're going to see that. So Decker came back here to tell the ref that he was reporting. And then there's a lot of comments talking about how you know what he said to the ref. Well, as a former player, the only time we approach refs, we either mad at them for making a bad call or we reporting. Well, if you go out and listen to the press conference, the post-game press conference, Goff, right here, Goff said he sent him out the huddle to go report. And that's exactly what happened. Goff told him to go report because Goff, he got the call from the sideline in his headset, it, through the headset. He sent him to report. That's how we know he reported. This guy, he just walked over with him, but he, don't say, he didn't say a word. He's just part of the disguise. He walked over there so Dallas would think that they don't know who, who's reporting. They, it's just part of the illusion. Okay? And when number 70 came on the sideline and ran over here toward them, he never even made it to them. And he started walking toward the defense to let them know who was eligible. Like I told you, most times when a team, when a guy report, it comes from the sideline and not from the huddle. He was looking at 70 coming on the field from the sideline. And so, in his mind, guys report from the sideline. So, he assumed, he assumed that it was 70 that was reporting. So, he walked over to, up to the defense and he said, you no, know, 70 is an eligible receiver. 70 is an eligible receiver. Okay? That's what he said. You can hear it on the loudspeaker. You can hear it. You know, if you look at, listen to the original um, broadcast, you can hear him say that. A lot of people in the comments asked, why didn't Detroit stop the play if they know he, they had the wrong number? If he called out the wrong number on the on the loudspeaker or the PA system, whatever you want to call it, why didn't they stop the play? Because they had the wrong guy. Well, Two things. Detroit had no timeouts left. Okay? They had no timeouts left. And also, Detroit was trying to hurry up to get to the line of scrimmage so they don't show anything. They were trying to get up to the line of scrimmage fast, get out the huddle, get here fast, and not show anything. When they got in the huddle, they probably was focused on the play. They weren't even thinking about what the referee was saying at that point, they got in the huddle. The sideline probably was concentrating on the play too. They were so focused on the play and it working that they probably didn't even, it didn't register with them. Maybe that happened. And they were trying to hurry up to get to the line of scrimmage to run this play so that Dallas wouldn't get a, a good look at it to be able to cover everybody. And they get the two-point conversion. They convert it and they go home with a win. Okay, now let's go back to the referee. This guy, he called, he said number 70. This is him right here. Number 70 was the eligible receiver. Well, when they shift, when they shift, I'm going to go ahead and shift. Let me go ahead and shift these guys. Let's shift these guys. Okay? So when they shift, He's inside. He ain't even on the end of the line of scrimmage. He's not on the end of the line of scrimmage. So therefore, that's more reason to realize that he didn't say a word because he knew he wasn't an eligible receiver. He, he didn't even make it out to these guys when he was over here talking to the referee. He never made it out there. And I'm going to show, show you that in the end. He never made it out there. He was nodding his head, but he was looking at 70. He was nodding his head that I got it, but he didn't get it. He didn't get it. That's what he was doing. And so, 70 is right here. He can't even be eligible inside. He lined up inside. Okay? So, forget about that of being a possibility. Okay, this formation here, this is an unbalanced formation. If the ref get this right, 
if he get this right and he got the right guy that reported, he's a tight end. He reported eligible receiver. He's a tight end. There's always five down linemen, five big guys, right? Five big guys in the game. And I'm trying to get you guys to understand this. There are five big guys in the game. Forget that he's number 68. They just pretend he went to the sidelines and he put another jersey on. He's now number 85. He's now number 85, okay? But here's the other five guys. Here are the five down. One, this guard. Two, this center. Three, this guard. Four, this tackle. Five, this guy right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we plan on defense, okay, and this is number 85 right here, we would automatically on defense say unbalanced left. This is number 85, okay? We would say unbalanced left. So when we say unbalanced left on defense, this is our new center right here. So we're trying to even things out. So it's unbalanced left, new center is right here. This guard right here is new center. If this is the new center, this is your guard, this is your tackle, this is your tight end, okay? Going the other way, this is your guard, this is your tackle, this is your tight end off the ball. It's an unbalanced look. There's nothing illegal about this formation. Now, let's talk about this guy. Look like he's on the line of scrimmage. This is your X receiver on the line of scrimmage. The guy over here is your Z receiver off the line of scrimmage. Okay? He's your Z receiver off the line of scrimmage. He's on, he's off. And you can tell he looked farther up than he do. Look at his back foot. He's almost about to touch this line. This guy's up more. 58 right here. Now, in a regular set, he lined up as a tight end, right? He lined up like in a tight end position. That was part of the disguise. That's why he walked back here with, with Decker. He walked back here with the 68, which is now 85 right here. He walked back here with Decker because he was part of the disguise. 70 ran on the field toward these guys because it's all about not giving these guys a clue on who was who and what was going on. Confuse them a little bit. That's what they were trying to do. They are trying to confuse the defense. For you guys saying this is a legal formation, it's not. Okay? He's your tight end right here. Because he reported as an eligible receiver. Okay? And then you got your five down. One, two, three, four, five. And you got your guy with the ball right here. Let's go back to the ref. The ref said that number 70 was the eligible receiver. Okay? Because the ref was wrong, maybe this is an illegal formation because he was wrong. The ref was wrong. It ain't got nothing to do with these guys, but the ref was wrong. Because he go 70 right here, he covered up. You know? It would be a legal formation because the ref is wrong. The ref is wrong. But that ain't what the ref called when he threw the flag. He said illegal touching by 68, who's our new number 85 right here. Okay? That's what he called. That was, that was the call on the field. Okay? Now, let's play devil's advocate. Okay, because the ref because the ref called the wrong number as the eligible receiver, these guys probably don't know who the hell to cover. They don't know who to cover. They thought 70 was going to be eligible, and he's inside here. And now they know. They pointing. They pointing everything, but they don't know who to cover because the referee got it wrong. So if the referee would have called out the right number that reported 68, it would be easier for these guys to decide who they were going to cover. Who they were going to cover. It would be this guy here. Probably wouldn't be no two-point conversion. They probably defend it in the story. In the story. Okay? So all this stuff that we're talking about, all this stuff that we're talking about comes down to the ref making the right call as he got it on the field, paying attention to the guy that was reporting, which was Hutchinson, paying attention to him who, were, who was reporting and not looking to the sideline, thinking and assuming that the report was coming, the guy that was reporting was coming from the sideline. And if the ref get this right, this formation is perfect. So by the referee getting the wrong number and assuming and calling out 70 as the eligible receiver, he really screwed up everybody. Everybody. He screwed up the offense, which got the two-point conversion to win the game. 
right? And he screwed up the defense to know who to cover in the situation. He screwed up both sides. I know my title is like the Detroit Lions got robbed. Maybe that's a little harsh to say they got robbed when the ref made the mistake. And I probably changed my titles on my videos. I'll change my titles. And I add the ref in there some kind of way. Because it's unfair to say that they got robbed when these guys didn't get the information either. They didn't get the information either. They don't know who to cover. They looking at 70 right here and say, hold on, he ain't even he ain't even in an eligible position. So how can he be eligible? Look, confused. These guys confused. They don't they don't know what, what to do. What to, who to cover? I can understand how this ref made this mistake. Because if you don't pay attention to who's talking to you and who's reporting and you assume you're going to make this mistake. 99% of the time, the guy that's reporting is coming from the sideline. Rarely do you get a guy out the huddle that come report to you. The referee got it wrong and he caused all this controversy. And I know the NFL is going to downgrade the whole crew for the playoffs in the Super Bowl. They won't be able to call the playoffs or the Super Bowl. Rightfully so. And from what I've heard, they've blown some calls this year. Right? They've blown some calls this year. But I, in this situation, I can see why the ref made the mistake he made because of his assumption that the reporter was coming from the sideline when he heard reporting. When he heard him say reporting. Let's move on and get ready for the playoffs. They both got good teams. Both of these are good teams. And they're going to move on. They're going to move on from this. And I'm wrapping this up because I'm not talking about it anymore. Okay? They completed this. And like I said, Dallas don't know. Dallas don't know who to cover. Because he said 70 was eligible and they had no clue 6 to 8 was even eligible. It, it confused them just as much as, um, you know, everybody else is confused about this whole situation. Okay? Oh, here you go, right here, from the end zone. From the end zone. Tight end. Okay? Tackle. Guard. Center. Guard. Tackle. Tight end off the ball. Okay. By this receiver outside being on the ball, you made him these guys, you made him ineligible. He didn't have to report. He didn't have to report because he's covered up. He didn't have to report. So now we know what he said was true. He didn't say an effing word. That's what he said. This is unbalanced, guys. This is unbalanced. And it's a great play by Detroit. It's an awesome play by Detroit. To tell him to report as eligible and he's a tight end now as soon as he did that he became a tight end now in essence he's in his regular position but when he reported and they bought in 70 so they took the slot receiver i bought in 70. usually when like we, they do this the offense when you do it from a regular offense the tackle would just flip over to the other side the tackle would leave from this side and go to this side that's exactly what this is he just came in and played the other side, played the tackle. He took his spot as a tackle. It flipped over here. He took his spot as a tackle and moved over here. Okay? And so now he's a tight end right here. This will usually be a tight end right here. Be an 80 some number or something like that. But he reported so that he can be the tight end. And 70 came over and took his spot as he flipped over here to make it an unbalanced set. To make it an unbalanced set. And that's what we got right here. This is 12 personnel. One running back, two tight ends. One running back, two tight ends. 12 personnel, that's what this is. And, of course, that's what happened. That's the play. It's not an illegal formation if the ref get the information right. God is absolutely stunned. This is Goff. He's telling them you guys got it wrong. He's trying to tell them that he sent the guy out the huddle to report. And he reported. He reported. 
That's what he's trying to tell them. But this crew and this referee, these guys don't want to listen. They don't want to get the information that they need to get to make this right. He messed this up. The white hat. He caused all this because he assumed that 70 from the sideline was reporting and it wasn't the guy in front of him, Decker, reporting. Now a flag comes in at the end and they've thrown another. Somebody mentioned that they threw two flags and they were trying to say that they threw the second flag because it was a legal formation. That's not why they threw the second flag. I don't think that ref was the one that was supposed to be making that call. So the ref that was supposed to be making that call ended up throwing the flag after he got the information. After he got the information. Because I think the lady, the female, threw the first flag. And then once they got the information, the guy or the ref that was supposed to be making the call on this, he threw his flag. That's what that was about. It wasn't about, you know, illegal formation or any of that stuff. Because that ain't what they call here. And in a minute, you're going to hear the ref explanation on what this call was about. The question is, did Skipper, an offensive lineman, report? What else Illegal could it be? Touching by number 68. Okay, you heard him. He said illegal touching by 68. He never reported as eligible. He never reported as eligible. That was the call. It had nothing to do with like illegal formation. Nothing, nothing to do with illegal formation. These guys were just as screwed up as everybody else. And all you got to do is patience. Take your time. Get it right. This is a crucial game. Late in the season, you want to get it right. All you want to do is get the information and get it right. Listen to the quarterback and what they saying. That the right guy reported. 70 never reported. And he know this because 70 never said anything to him. He just assumed that the reporting, the guy reporting to him was for 70. He was looking outside. I'm going to show you that in a second. So the call is an illegal touch. I think number 70 and number 68 came in. And I'm not sure 68 reported as an eligible. I don't know if this is Troy Aikman that's announcing this game talking. But 68 walked up to the referee. So how can he say he didn't report? He walked up to the referee to report. Goff sent him out the huddle to report. Now, he don't have all the information at hand, so he's just talking. He's just talking. But when you approach the referees in this situation, because it was a timeout. It was also a timeout. Detroit had all the time in the world during that timeout to go get the right guys to report. Like I told you guys, in practice, these guys have to report in practice. They run these plays over and over again. It's all about the ref, guys. Nothing else. The 68 is Taylor Decker, their left tackle. Skipper came in, he reported. And 68 is there at left tackle, and he's the one who ends up making the catch. Right, but he's on the end of the line, and he's been playing that ineligible position. So if he's going to be on the end of the line and be eligible, he needed to report as well. Wow. And that's exactly what he did. He reported. He was the only one that reported. You didn't need nobody else to report. Because all the other guys were ineligible. In el ineligible positions. So that will back it up. And the Lions will have to do it again. Well, you see Dan and you know why Dan is hotter than fish grease? Because they go over this stuff every single time. Every week. Two point plays. Gotta have it plays. That's what they call them. Gotta have it plays. To him, and I can't imagine... You know, I can't imagine them having that play in and him not reporting. That's a former player that's announcing this game. He also know that they do this over and over in practice. That's why he just said what he said. He said he can't imagine them having this play in and them not reporting. He know. He know. Because that would be stressed throughout the week I, I, by an eligible. So it's an el ineligible downfield. It's illegal touching by alignment. It's an illegal formation. They're all five yards. Take your choice on which one you want here. He needed to report if he's going to play that position. If you read his lips, he's going to say it twice. I didn't say a effing word. 
I didn't say a effing word, which he didn't. Brad only announced number 70, one number. So I would guess that he did not report, and he should have. Back to this play to give you every... We got Skipper running onto the field. This is Skipper right here. Number 70, Dan Skipper. Coming onto the field. Okay, here's the ref. Look where he's looking. His eyes are here. Looking at the guy coming in subbing. Okay, like I told you guys, 99% of the time, a guy reporting going to come from the sideline. Going to come from the sideline. But this time, Decker, who's right here, came from the huddle. Because Goff told him to go report. We're going to need you to report for this play. Because he got the play in on his headset. And the coaches on the headset probably reminded him also, tell Decker to go report. That's why he sent him to report. This is Decker right here. This is 58 right here. Okay? So look at his eyes and who he's looking at. He's looking here. Decker is going to report. He's saying reporting, reporting. And because he's looking here, he got 70 and not him. Not the guy that was actually doing the reporting. Said, I'm, you know, I'm reporting. He got my guy out here because his eyes is here. So watch this. When he runs out here, he never even got to this huddle. The ref had already made his way to the defense to tell them who was eligible. He actually got on the PA system to announce that 70 was the eligible receiver. Was the eligible receiver. Now, people, always, people keep saying, why didn't Detroit catch that and you know, let them know? Well, for one, like I said, they had no timeouts. And these guys got in the huddle. You're going to see them get in the huddle when he walked this way. He walked this way. They go to the huddle. They get in the call, and they're going to go fast. Him running this way, these two coming up this way, is all a part of the disguise to keep them from knowing who to cover. And they would have known who to cover if, right here, if he get it right and he say 68 is the eligible receiver. 68 is eligible. That's all he had to say. Get it right. Get the number right. Don't look over here at this guy coming off the sideline and assume that the report guy reporting is coming from the sideline. Don't assume that. Get the information from the guy right here. It's all about details. Paying attention. That's all this, all this is. So, and all this is about this guy right here. Look, we can. Skipper comes in. He goes to Brad Allen and reports. Notice how when Skipper was running up there, he was looking at him. He was nodding his head, but he was nodding his head that Skipper was the guy reporting. Not that Decker was. And that's why you see him nodding his head. Because Decker was talking to him, reporting. He nodded his head like he had it, but he was actually talking about Skipper. The left tackle, Taylor Decker, did not. And as you said, John Perry. And then you see him go to the defense to get him the number of the guy reporting. You see him rubbing his hands down his chest? That's the report signal. Hey, 70 is reporting. 70 is reporting. That's the way you're telling them. But he got it wrong. It's 68 that's reporting. Okay? So now let's end this with... The fact that he told them it was 70, and when they come line up, the defense is also confused. Because now 70 is covered, and they probably think, like, what the hell? 70 is covered. Why would he be? He's, he's ineligible. So could be the reason that 68 was wide open over here and not covered because he gave them the wrong information. Ain't got nothing to do with this team. Ain't got nothing to do with this team. It's all about getting the right information from this guy right here. This guy right here. So, I will change the titles later. But for you guys to get this information, I'll keep the title the same for right now. But I'm telling you, life goes on for these two teams. They both are in the playoffs. And the fans of these teams... You should be proud of these teams and the way they played this year to put themselves in these situations to get the way they need to get. Okay? You hate that this happened on Jimmy Johnson night or day, whatever you got call it, 
You hate for this to happen on Jimmy Johnson day or night, but it happened. And it shouldn't have happened if the ref just get the right information and not assume. You know what they say about assume. It makes an ass out of you and me. In this case, it made an ass out of this ref. Okay? That's what happened on this play. So don't come in comments saying, Hi, I know. I wasn't there to hear what was going on, what was said. I played 15 years. I know that you approached the refs to report. And the fact that Goff said he told him in the huddle to go report, and the fact that he said it to him, he left the huddle to go report. Come on, man. No brainer for me. No brainer for me. Good luck to both of these teams. I know some of the coaches on these teams. I know a lot of coaches on, on Detroit. I know coaches on Dallas. My thing is, I'm not on either side. I'm the middle guy. So all you guys that's commenting like I'm a Detroit fan, I'm not a Detroit fan. I'm a coach. Now, if they hired me as a coach, I'm all in. I'm all in for the team I'm with. I'm all in for the team I'm with. And, but until then, I'm just a middleman. I'm just a coach telling you how this goes. I use my channel to break down plays. I broke down some Dallas stuff on here. I got some shorts about Dallas on here, about some of the players on here. I got a short coming up about C.D. Lamb, who had an awesome game. He had an awesome game, 200 and some yards in this game. I got a short coming up with him in it. I hope that you guys would subscribe to the channel. I got a lot of stuff coming in the future. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon. Hit all so you get all my videos whenever I post. Hit that like button, guys, so you can share my video with more people. Life goes on. Get ready for the playoffs because it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Until next time, guys, Club 93 is officially closed. Let's get it.